Viewer discretion advised. are a relatively new engineering material category which offers novel capabilities. Within this broad category of materials, one outstanding example is the cellulose nanocrystals. Cellulose is found in nature in a wide variety of organisms and is an important structural component of cell walls of plants, algae, and some species of bacteria. This makes cellulose one of the most abundant biological materials on Earth. So far, everything is fine, but for Dr. Harold Wood, some things were never fine. But what is cellulose? Let's first go to Dr. Well-Adjusted to find out. Cellulose is a polysaccharide sugar, similar to starch, but just a little bit different. Um, its chemical structure is set, but it can have a few different, take a few different physical forms. It can be amorphous um, or crystalline. So its crystalline form can go to very small diameters, down to about 3 nanometers, and can be 10 to 100 times longer than that. In addition, while you get cellulose that small, it also becomes about as strong as steel. If cellulose nano biocomposites show such amazing properties, how do we get them? We'll go to Mr. Kemi to find out how. Uh, excuse me, it's pronounced Sheme. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Kemi. Cellulose, specifically the kind used for cellulose nanocrystals, can come from just about any organism with a cell wall, like trees, crops, and even algae. Of these, wood pulp is the most common raw source. But each raw source also has a lot of other stuff in it, which has to be removed to get useful cellulose nanocrystals. We'll use wood as an example. First, we must grind and mill the wood, and then rinse it with water. Once we have this pulp, we must chemically treat it to remove other components, particularly ligand and hemicellulose. We start with a strong base, like sodium hydroxide, to remove most of the impurities. After the base treatment, we bleach it with uh, sodium hypochlorite to remove the remaining ligand, which is the most difficult to remove. The result is a white powder or pulp that can be used to make cellulose nanocrystals. Similar processes of mechanical and chemical treatment are used to extract crystalline cellulose from other sources. So, now we know what CMCs are, how strong they are, and how we get them. But the question is, how do we use them? Now we get back to Dr. Well Adjusted to find out. Because of the fantastic properties cellulose nanocrystals offer, as well as their abundance in nature, one of the most interesting uses for them is in, is in reinforced nanocomposites. Reinforced nanocomposites work by dispersing a reinforcing agent, something very strong, very stiff, in a matrix of something that tends to be much weaker and usually more or far less expensive. The material properties of cellulose nanocrystals work, fan work very well for this application. However, there are some challenges to using cellulose nanocrystals. The first being the number of surface hydroxyl groups they have. These surface hydroxyl groups causes them to often aggregate in ways that prevent them from forming a good adhesion with the matrix material. To overcome this challenge, often we use dispersing agents or modify the surface of the cellulose to be, make it more compatible with 
the different matrices we introduce it into, or the different solvents we use. To better explain how cellulose actually work as a reinforcement, we'll go to Michael at the beach. Hey everyone, I'm in my hometown of Satellite Beach, Florida, and uh, we're going to take a field trip to the beach to go uh, talk about mechanical properties of cellulose nanocrystals. Let's have some fun. be thinking to yourself, how can I describe mechanical properties of cellulose and nanocrystals on the beach? I mean, if I were to show you a video of the forest, you could say, oh yeah, cellulose is derived from trees and everything like that. But at the beach, it's mostly got a lot of sand. The major way in which cellulose nanocrystals have their outstanding mechanical properties is by their ability to form a percolating network. The way in which this works is that uh, we have these cellulose nano whiskers, or they're, like, they're really uh, highly anisotropic. You know, uh, you can think of this stick as, a, as an idea where they're uh, long in one direction, but maybe not in the other directions. Um, and uh, what happens is that they form um, these connections with each, with each other to form what's called sometimes an infinite aggregate. Now, if they were to just form uh, small scale local aggregates, that's uh, um, bad for a composite material because those are sites for, for failure. But in an infinite aggregate, they are uh, homogeneously distributed within the polymer matrix. So in that case, uh, it's actually good. And the way in which uh, they, they uh, form this infinite aggregate to form this percolating network is through a secondary bond interaction known as hydrogen bonding. And the reason why I brought you to the beach here today is because this uh, phenomenon of hydrogen bonding between individual components uh, can be seen at the beach when we built sandcastles. So, in this uh, little analogy, an experiment if you will, um, I will try to build a sandcastle with wet sand and then a sandcastle with dry sand. And uh, the wet sand is going to represent hydrogen bonding and to sort of represent this uh, percolating network of an infinite aggregate and then the dry sand will uh, represent particles that do not have uh, the secondary bond interaction. So, we'll see how it works. I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. To catch them is my real test, to train them is my cause. I will travel across. Okay, now what we'll try with dry sand. Obviously this isn't working. What we can see here is that because there is no um, bonding between each grain of sand, the sand can't even hold its own weight collectively. So in this case, secondary bonding is highly important to form this uh, percolating network in order to have the uh, robust properties that we see with uh, cellulose nanocrystals. Now, you may say, well, Michael, like, these sand crystals, they, uh, they're spherical, or you know, they're 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 cubic, or you know, they're they're not they're not anisotropic, like um, CNCs, and that's correct. Um, that's kind of where the analogy breaks down. But I think it's still a good enough analogy to, to show the importance of secondary bonding, uh, especially in the nanoscale, and how it really adds up over time uh, to form these high strength materials um, with something that. Uh, in the bulk may not really seem to be high strength. We don't really consider cellulose to be a high strength material, but uh, when we shrink it down to the nano size and with all these secondary bonding interactions, which usually by itself is a weak interaction, um, they can actually form fascinating uh, materials with extraordinary strength. Um, so that's it for me right here. Uh, thanks a lot. As we can see, Composites incorporating CNC's as a reinforcement material displays exceptional properties. But why did Dr. Wood do it? Now, let's ask him. I'm Professor Wood, and the reason I'm incarcerated right now is because I cut down the campus tree. Now you're wondering, why would I cut down the campus tree? Well, I wanted more cellulose for my experiments. To make new materials out of. Now, you're wondering, what 
to make more composites like they've already made? The ones that are showing great promise in the other labs? No, no, that's boring. It's very boring. You can already do that with glass fibers or carbon fibers. No, I want to make functional composites. So, functional composites, let's think about this. I want something that can go from being very hard to soft when we apply the right stimulus. But when we apply this right stimulus, I want to make sure that it stays the way it is. And also can switch back when we take it away. Now you're wondering, why would we do this? Well, when we do that, when we say we want to put a brain probe in somebody, uh, just monitor different things. We gotta have it hard so we can actually get it in the brain. But if it stays hard in the brain, then the whole body just like I'm gonna cover that up, and you won't be effective. So if it gets soft, the body's like, oh, there's nothing else there. Now think about it another way. We can also make tires out of these that can be very hard and good for driving in dry conditions. But when it gets wet and it can just get softer and we can get better traction and stay safe on the roads. I'm not a bad guy for wanting these things, but think about it. With cellulose, we can also make materials that for packaging and other things that are strong and good for good to hold our things in. But when we discard them, we can forget about them because nature can take them away from us without worrying. And not having to worry about things in the future is what we really want. Um, thanks, Harry. Well, as we can see, CNCs are a renewable reinforcement material that has many potential applications. But remember, when you get them, use a good source and not a campus tree.